Hi, I'm Wendy Friesen, and this is How Your Brain Works. If you missed part one, you definitely want to go back and see that first because it explains a lot about the dendrite growth and how what we focus on expands and how our brain actually reaches into different places in the brain to find what it needs. And it's, um, it's pretty fascinating stuff. So now we're going to talk a little bit about neural networks. And in part three, we're going to talk about mind machines, and I think it will blow your very mind. Neural networks. Our, our brains um, don't have like a single thought or activity that goes to one specific thing to make something happen. Like let's say you want to be better at names, at remembering names. What your brain does is it grows these dendrites and it reaches out in these neural networks to find things that help you support having a good memory, having recall, um, things that would trigger someone's name that would make you instantly good at names. And it has a lot of different things that it has to pull in as far as resources to make that happen. That's pretty obvious. When you go to um, hit a golf ball, you know, it's definitely not, there's not one place in your brain that says this is the hit a golf ball spot. It uses all kinds of coordination and balance and, um, uh, you know, eye, hand, body movements and tempo and all these things. So there's a lot of things that happen. So we build these neural networks and the neural networks, when we want to do something good are very helpful and very important. If you've built a neural network to be great at a sport or great at studying or really good at, um, at being happy, resourceful, creative, these are handy. But in a lot of cases, we've built really powerful neural networks that help support something negative, something we don't want. And you didn't mean to do that, but perhaps you grew up with someone saying that you're kind of worthless and that you're no good and you'll never amount to anything. Or maybe in your life, you got an addiction to drugs or alcohol and you continued to build this neural network about failure and about never being good enough and not being able to you know, to get out of that rut. Well, one of the interesting things in um, trying to get out of a rut is the study they did with some rats, and we like to study rats because their brains are very similar to ours, apparently, I, in some ways, hopefully not too similar. But they took these rats and they stressed them, and they stressed them by holding them under water and giving them electrical shocks and things like that. But once they stressed the rats' brains for a few weeks, what they found was that the rats lost the ability to be resourceful or creative or think in ways that they could motivate themselves to make new decisions. So you think about your life being stressful and how difficult it is sometimes to get out of a stressful mindset and get out of depression. And this could be why. So when your brain is stressed continually and you're subjected to that, your brain is wiring itself and building these neural networks to support being stressed and to just coping under stress and just coping. So these rats, when they're put in a maze after they're stressed, they don't try to get out of the maze. They just run the same pattern over and over and over. While the rats that weren't stressed, that were sitting there with like the massage and the uh, margaritas on the lawn chair by the pool, those rats, when they put them in the maze, they would go around and they'd find new ways and try to get out of the maze and try all the directions they could. Does this make sense? So a stressed brain is going to just repeat a pattern because that's all it can do. It's just coping with the stress. It is very, very difficult for this stressed brain to get any resource that gets you in any other direction. <clears throat> and here's why. Your brain builds these neural networks. These are these are just super highways that all connect together and they all have a lot in common. And what they have in common is that they know how to cope with stress and they connect all the past experiences of all the stress and all the same beliefs and the thoughts and ideas that go along with it. So the other thing the rats did that were stressed is they um, would eat food and they gave them like, I think it was sugary water or something and they gave them... Um, unlimited amounts of food and the rats would continue to eat and drink the sugary water and until I mean they just kept doing it they couldn't stop themselves even when they weren't hungry and there was no need for it and they just kept pushing the bar for more and more food so it was a repetitive repetitive pattern that they didn't have the ability to stop so think about yourself as a human being if you are stressed continuously for a certain amount of days or weeks and then you don't know why you can't stop a certain habit, whether it's alcohol or eating too much or smoking or anger or whatever your habit is. 
this kind of explains it. The brain goes into a mode where it doesn't have the ability to be resourceful, to look for new solutions, to try anything new, to think creatively. You're just stuck. So a stressed brain has a really hard time getting over an addiction, whether it's smoking or drugs or alcohol or an addiction to food or sugar, or if you need to be able to study better and you need to have more creative thought to write papers or to retain information, your brain can't do that when it's stressed. All it can do is stay in this exact same rut and do the same thing over and over again. Fascinating, huh? Very important stuff.